So good morning, active traders. I'm Ken Calhoun, your host, president of the original Day Trading University and Trade Mastery. To get access to work with me, be sure to visit crushwallstreet.com and register this weekend. Uh, either that or if you're on a budget, at least do the three-week trial in my live room for just $7 at www.tradingtheopen.com. You have my word. I like to answer questions and give you specific entries that usually work out and figure this thing out together as a team. This week's coaching, we covered the VIX breakout that we saw and the sell-off that I forecasted correctly two weeks ago uh, with specifics doing well. Unlike any other trading educator in the world that I've seen, I can actually prove I'm making money uh, as of today, right? With our inverse instrument. So uh, after a, a nice initial jump start last week, I held $11,000 worth of inverses over the weekend and profited on Monday. I'm, hold, I'm upping the ante a bit. I'm, I'm in long, it's about $14,000. I'm eyeballing that. How much is that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13. Well, around $14,000 worth of inverses with TVIX. I made uh, up over $700 yesterday in that 170 share trade alone. Notice one of the core tenets for good professional trading is absolutely small risk management. You do not see 1,000 share trades over here. The way that I make money as a trader is to scale in incrementally. I usually buy TVIX up here at the $50, $60 share range in just 10 share increments, but I still made 700 or up $700 yesterday just on 70 shares because I'm 10 points and one penny in the money on the trade. Now, of course, if I had bought 700 shares, I'd be up $7,000. So, but there's something to be said about limiting your risk on the front end. So make sure that you're learning how to do that from me, a real trader. That was last week in TVIX. As always, all information is for educational use only. I'm not making advice about what to buy, sell, or hold. I'm a real trader. Let's take a look at what the heck's going on. Show me the money. Now, let me ask you, let's start off. How many of you are currently trading and profitable like I am, uh, some of the inverse instruments, like I've been gently nudging you towards thinking about for the last couple of weeks, right, in anticipation of the market, the stock market apocalypse. How many of you are trading? I'm, I'm seriously curious. I had a really big turnout today. How many of you are trading or thinking about trading some of the inverses like VXX or UVXY or TVIX, the VIX ETNs or SQQ or SOXs or any of the, there's a lot of inverse instruments to choose from. I trade the ones with the biggest profit potential, but there's plenty. There's SDS, QID, FAZ. There's a whole plethora of inverse instruments that go up when the stock market crashes. To be up to speed on exactly which ones are the best and where to trade them, that's why you want to join my live room. But anyway, let's take a look at our market and see what's going on. Market is taking out its biggest red candle day in many months. The key technical kind of a warning sign is that we lost the 50 simple moving average yesterday, or at least it touched down under it, it closed above it. Uh, technicians will be looking to see if we trade within this channel next week or if we get a bounce recovery, which is certainly possible. Every time we've had a big sell-off for any sustained length of time, it's been met by a reversal. Now, coronavirus fears notwithstanding and China trade wars and impeachment and election pending and all these economic headwinds. Uh, I've long said the last few weeks that the market's very much likely to sell off any second now. So we may well see a sustained selling window in the markets. It's a question from Bill, do I ever do trades during extended hours? Yeah, I mean, I bought TVIX at 45 because I'm a freaking genius. Uh, two days ago when it dropped after, it did a big sell-off and I stopped out on the way down, but it dropped so far that I then rebought on the pivot uh, and now it's up 10 points for me. So that was pretty cool. TVIX crashed and burned and I stopped out on the way down and aftermarket, I bought it at four, I think it was 45.15 or 45.20, something like that. Aftermarket, uh, it was way, way down here. And I said, Surely that's overdone, so I'll buy some. And I bought some and scaled in on the way up. And so it's been a really nice recovery story. And that really illustrates, that took, it took me 20 minutes to decide what to do with that, but 
if I were to put in an aftermarket chart, you'd see it, it moved. It kept on going down aftermarket, then stalled at 45 and started to bounce. That's when I bought it and I held it, right? So now I'm in 70 shares deep and it's up nicely. Hey, traders. Question from a trader, Gerald, is it too late to start trading then versus? It's never too late. It'll only be too late if they stop us from trading them, which there's a pending SEC res regulation to limit or curtail uh, inverse and leveraged ETF trades, but hopefully that won't pass. Got to end of March, March 24th to get comments in to say we don't want that to happen. Anyway, good directional breakouts. We've seen Tesla's been holding its own nicely up here at 660. I'd be looking for a short under the 620 or long over the 660, just a simple box trading range up here. Amazon did a really nice gap up, a 200 point gap. It gave back quite a bit of it in yesterday's bloodbath uh, going from the 2050 open down to 2010, so a 40 point drop. But a big 200 point gap in Amazon bodes well for it. If it's, it's most likely to continue to grind on down here, right? It's least likely to keep running up. The main thing that you want to obsess over that I do is the VIX, right? Become an expert in trading volatility by joining my live trading room at www.tradingtheopen.com. If you're not yet a member, be sure. If at no other time in your life you join my live room, join for next week because not only do I have so many winning alerts, but I'm an expert in trading the inverse instruments. And we're at that tipping point where the market's likely to crash. VIX is up at a 90 day high, right? Up and touched right under the 20, which is. Surprising for it, it's, uh, the VIX has been range bound in a 12 to 15 channel for the last three months or so, the better part of three months. We're finally starting to see volatility pick up. It is long overdue and about time, but I'm happy because I'm making lots of money with it. So anyway, that this is a lead indicator that bodes well for any of the VIX ETNs like TVIX and UVXY. Let me see what questions you guys have. So the trader said he, he he missed the inverses. Yeah, Tesla moved big last week. Let's see. Uh, hey, hey, Dan. Hey, Phil. Hey, Peter. Hey, Eric. Hey, Jeanette. <clears throat> People saying you're giving a thought some of your in VXX and UVXY. Good charts. Anyway, what I want you to do is pay attention to the VIX and. Um, that's a really smart lead indicator for what's going on in terms of overall market volatility. If you look at the two year, you can see the last time the VIX spiked heavily was during the December sell off. If you remember the carnage, and then the day after Christmas recovery, uh, the point is there's a lot of profit potential trading the inverses as the VIX spikes. <clears throat> the range in the VIX last time it ran was 12 to just under 14 or 38. So. 26 point run last time. <clears throat> There's nothing, <clears throat> nothing standing in the way of our VIX continuing on up. So when the VIX goes up, our VIX ETNs go up dramatically, like TVIX and UVXY. So that's an outlier data point that any good Wall Street market technician pays attention to. When the VIX breaks all three moving average lines and holds above them, which it did. That's a significant data point that the market may be in for a continued bloodbath, right? So I'm a happy bear. Happy bear roar. If you look at our sectors, you can see we're seeing major pullbacks, <clears throat> almost a head and shoulders pattern, right? in the pharmaceuticals, which really took it in the shorts last week, right? Gave back a lot of their, uh, all of their January gains. Semiconductors also experiencing selling pressure. It's a sell, sell, sell house of pain, which is why I'm long the inverse, which is SOXS, right? And there is a ton of upside potential in all things inverse.
that is a very clear volume, high volume pivot pattern with the bullish engulfing here, leading to a week long uptrend and a green candle here piercing above the 50 simple moving average line. It would be a piece of cake for this guy to potentially get as high as 40 or 60. So keep an eye on SOXS, SOXS, the short semiconductor leveraged ETN. Again, for experienced traders only who are fully aware of the risks involved in trading leveraged instruments. But now is a really good inflection point because we're seeing not only bullish engulfing, we have a perfect trifecta of a reversal. You've got candle, voice of the candles, bullish engulfing. That's a very strong reversal. I, I like to say, I find that bullish engulfings tend to be more consistent than hammers in my own professional experience. So that's another, for the types of instruments that I trade, <clears throat> bullish engulfings have been the strongest candlestick pattern lately, uh, even better than hammers. <clears throat> and mean reversion pivots have been the most consistent, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> do a lot of broadcasting, so my voice sometimes fades in and out. But anyway, I'm here live from Colorado. It's Ken Calhoun, and we're going to take a look at what's going to move. And we've got a bullish engulfing in the voice of the east. We've got a breakout above the nearest moving average line, voice of the west. And we've got volume confirmation and large green candles forming, which is yet another technical confirmation. And we've got one-year high volume in these guys, right? So for that reason, I'm keenly interested in making a lot of money during the recovery and the inverses in case the market drops. Continues to drop. The reason I'm obsessed with TVIX is because it makes me the most money of anything in the world. Uh, so that's a side trade what makes me money. Go with the sure, not the sure thing, but go with what works, right? Anyway, I think we're a bit oversold and the street agrees. We're seeing not only bullish engulfing here, we had one year high volume last week, and now we had one year high volume print again on the breakout above, the pivot breakout above the 50 SMA, one year high volume in TVIX yesterday as well. So we'll probably see it crash back down on Monday a bit or do a mean reversion pullback and then continue up later in the week. So for more on how that all works, be sure that you're working with me in the live room. Directionally, <clears throat> big charts, WWE had a big gap down. I'm completely uninterested in buying gaps down or buying things on weakness. You hear the talking heads sometimes on financial news TV said, I'm using the selling pressure as an opportunity to pick up shares on the cheap. I think that would be a really particularly stupid idea. You want to sell it if it's going down. You want to buy it if it's going up. Learn that the hard way. You don't buy stuff that's going down because it looks cheap. That's a way to blow up your trading account or at least take big hits. So instead, it's good to buy what's going up. So if you see a big gap down, don't have the department store mentality. Hey, it's on sale. I should pick some up here. <laughs> Next thing you know, it's down at 24. You're like, yeah, well, you thought it was cheap at 44. It's really cheap at 24. So anyway, big epic drops in charts like LK, the China Starbucks, it's a 10 point drop to the downside, right? inverse head and shoulders here, but didn't really produce much of an upside for it, right? It did a mean reversion bounce, right? It sold off and it bounced up to about the middle. And if you're trading pivots, do look for exit targets. That's another quick technical trading tip is your exit target. Be clear on your exit targets and where you wanna take profits or where you wanna lighten up on a trade or at least start to scale out and tighten in a trailing stop. Uh, you wanna do that at mean reversion. So if you bought the pivot, say over the 28, or with a 29, the exit target would be right near 31, and you'd lighten up on the trade or go to cash there at first sign of trouble. So if you do buy pivot plays, look for the exit target is the middle of the chart, basically. So here you can see 37 to 27, the exact middle is what? 32, and it stopped there on a dime. Witness the power and the profit potential of high frequency trading algorithms in Wall Street software. That's why we're having a mean reverting market this past year is the machines are in control. I need to watch the new Terminator movie with Sarah Connors. I don't know if it's any good or not. But I like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. Hasta la vista, baby. Anyway, mean reverting pivots are what we see often 
in our current market. And this is a really terrific example of the type of chart that I like to trade because of the profit potential. It's got lots of points of range. These kind of charts, by the way, are perfect for active day traders because they've got lots of volume and volatility and they still have leverage, uh, but not at the cost of inconsistency that the two and three dollar or the sub ten dollar low flow crappy horrible gamblers stocks trade. Stocks under ten dollars are for morons. You have my word on that. I've lost the most money trying to trade cheap stocks because they don't run very far. They run 30 or 40 cents at best. And give me a chart that you don't have to be that split second right. And you know, I can get some money out of this chart, just you know, 80 cents or a dollar on a recovery kind of thing. That's a lot more profit, you know, than trying to go for a 20 or 30 cent run in a five dollar stock. So big point ranges make a lot of sense to trade where they're trading something like that. Or like I was trading TVIX yesterday. And I'm holding into the weekend because I think the virus news is good for a lot more in terms of selling pressure. Hey, Jurgen, let's see I can how to play such a, I don't understand the word tramp, tramp, P R A M P O I N, or is it not possible? Hey, Serena, how about trading IPOs? Not in this market. Uh, in general, I don't like trading IPOs because there aren't previous ranges to work with. One of the reasons for my success in my winning trades is that I use the same kind of signals that high frequency trading algorithms use, like OHLC data points, whole number support and resistance, uh, and major moving averages, the 1500 and 200 for swing trades. You don't have that intel available in an IPO. So I, don't, I stay away from IPOs. I found there's not any established history. There's no support or resistance areas for traders to trade off of. It's kind of like just blind, blind. I mean, if it keeps going up, great, but personally, I'm, I'm not a fan of IPOs. All right, Bill, yeah, Tesla had a big week last week. I think that's about it. Jump down in a pullback. Okay, thanks, Ergen. Yeah, sure, thanks, Renith, yeah. Yeah. A lot of money to be made or lost in the market, right? And we want to be on the right side of things. So hopefully my training can help get you up to speed on not only charts that are worth trading, but, you know, I'll go back to this. It is so important. To focus on patterns that are consistent. My all access pass is at crushwallstreet.com. The trials at tradingtheopen.com. But my main point is, when it comes to learning how to trade, you know, who you trust, who you want to work with, look for an approach that, number one, make sure that the person you're learning from is a real trader, and that'll weed out 98% of all educators who are chart talkers. People that talk about charts, wah, 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 and do a lot of internet marketing, aren't necessarily the same people that can help you make money as a trader. You got to learn from people like myself that have, you know, proven expertise and having some gains here and there and are able to at least make actual successful trades and have decent days. For me, any day over $1,000 in the green is good. I was up $1,700 yesterday. Hopefully I'll magnify that and it'll go up even more. But be sure when you learn from people that you're learning from people that actually prove they trade. I can't... It, not doing that would be like learning how to be a doctor from somebody who just read books and talks a lot on the circuit about best practices in being a physician, but they're not even a real doctor, right? They just talk about it. That's how most of the trading business and education realm is. Learn from people who have the experience of current real money trades like I'm doing, right? So, I mean, I present for your consideration the fact that actually I'm way the, way the heck up and I know how to trade. Uh, Learn from the real deal, not people that just talk about chart patterns. People that talk about chart patterns and traders are not necessarily in the same group, right? Authenticity is very important, especially in this industry. Any industry is important. You know, you want to learn from people that actually are practitioners that not only talk the talk, but they walk the walk. The quote from the great movie, Full Metal Jacket by Stanley Kubrick. 
they talk the talk, but do they walk the walk? Can they show P&Ls and real recent real money trades that they made that are successful? And how can you learn how to do that? And so I hope that I earn your trust in working with me in the live room. Hey, Eric, let's see what broker to use. I have three. I have accounts with interactive brokers I've used the longest, and then Fidelity, the second longest, and Ameritrade. I just recently started uh, an account there. But my main trading account currently, I'm trading out of my SEP uh, with uh, Fidelity. So historically, I've used interactive brokers has been my main broker. But I like the fact that if you trade within your retirement account in your SEP, unfortunately, you can't short, uh, but at least you don't have to go through all the cover some tax calculations. Uh, you don't have to do the 4898s if you're trading out of a SEP IRA versus a regular cash account. So that's that's a time-saving paperwork benefit. Anyway, so in summary, I told you guys to go short the market. Remember last, a week ago Friday, I said, for the love of God, sell all your stocks if you're still in. We've got a bearish engulfing. Hopefully you listened to me, because now look what happened. Now, either we're going to get the bounce back up to the 3260 mean reversion on Monday, which is certainly possible, especially if there's some positive news or some spin from the Fed or the White House or whatever on progress in the virus, which I'm sure they'll post to try and pump up the markets. But I think people are starting to see through that and markets are likely to continue to crash. Gap down continuation is the most likely pattern in next week's markets. Now, with the Hang Seng being closed, the China market's been closed all last week for their New Year's. Uh, it's widely expected that the China market will gap down big time with all the pent up sell pressure due to the, the virus, the pandemic over there. So, uh, and Asia leads US in terms of timing. So, Asia markets is a lead indicator. And then we'll see the our US futures data coming out Sunday evening to see what happens as a lead indicator for Monday morning. So anyway, that's going to wrap us up for now. I want to thank you all for being here. Let me know if any a quick question. I've got swing scans coming up in a minute. So at a minimum, go to tradingtheopen.com. Join me for the next few weeks and learn how to trade professionally. The, you know, the right patterns and the specific entries that I give you and the walkthroughs with tape reading and the rest of it. Certainly like to see join. And try it out. I mean, it's only seven dollars. I mean, so hopefully that's not a. Uh, hopefully I've removed the, the its expensive sales objection. And even the regular month is uh, only ninety-seven a month. So that's half what I used to charge. So it's a bargain. And there's no upsells too. I don't try and upsell people into some multi-thousand-dollar, you know, course or insiders club crap or any of that kind of shit. I, I don't do that. I'm I'm a straight shooter. You get great training for a bargain. I make it up on volume, which is why I have so many hundreds of folks. So, hey, I mean, let's see. No, I, I question do I trade SVXY? No, I'm sure it's way down. Hey, Ed. Hey, Eric. Let's see. Thanks. I'm considering IB as well as TD Ameritrade. Yeah, they're all good. Hey, Jeanette. Good to hear it about the summit. Anyways, join me or not at your peril. Uh, hopefully I can walk you through some great charts. Just a reminder too, all week next week, I'm also doing free uh, trading the close sessions at no cost. And you can get access to those from Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 4 by going to www.trademastery.com forward slash TTO free. So that way you can get at least access in the close. You won't get all the, the great winning alerts each morning that my members get, but at least you'll see what alerts they did get and get up to speed on the type of charts we cover. So you can engage it free or just seven bucks. So no reason not to work with me. And also I freaking know how to trade down market. So I'm the go-to guy for inverses. If you wanna learn how to trade these the right way during an upcoming market meltdown, I'd love to see in the room. And a question. <clears throat> I can buy and is it best to go with <clears throat> a trend that's strong bullish rather than trying to buy a stock that crashed? It all depends on the chart, right? And the timing of the market. But in general, I like to go in. <clears throat> I traded the pivot and TVIX profitably 
yesterday uh, or the day before, I should say. Uh, but yeah, in general, you want to go. I'm a big proponent of in-trend directional breakouts. I like to buy what's going up and strong, and sell what's going down and weak, like our market. So, anyways, thanks for being here, everybody. I'm going to wrap up. I've got swing scans coming up next for my swing scans members, and we've got, of course, even better charts and more in-depth training. So. See you guys next time.